Welcome back to Teach Amanda Fish Channel. Today's video, we're going to be doing tacos al pastor for you. Let's go ahead and get started. In our most recent trip to Mexico, we went through Chihuahua and Monterey, Mexico. We experienced true street tacos while we were there. That sets the bar pretty high for what we're teaching you how to cook here in the United States because we're comparing it to the real deal down in Mexico. The best part of this is now you can find almost all of these ingredients in the grocery store now. You can see we've got our dried ancho and guajillo peppers there. We'll be reconstituting those, but first you've got to take the seeds, remove the seeds from those peppers. They say that that's where the bitterness in the marinade resides. So you scrape those out. You don't necessarily have to get wrapped around the axle over getting those seeds out. Just do, do a good job of getting the seeds out of those peppers before you throw them into the water, the boiling water, to reconstitute. Even the water that these get boiled in have a bitterness to it. We'll be dumping that out after reconstituting these peppers. All of the ingredients go into a marinade that get blended or pureed into a thick paste for our pork to sit in. Get five or six garlic cloves cleaned up, get the skins off, get the little nubs on the end cut off. These silicone garlic peelers make it a snap to get the skins off of these garlic cloves. If you like any of the gear and equipment that we use in this video, I'll put links down below where you can go and purchase it. It's time to get the dry ingredients together. First, we've got smoked paprika, then a little bit of cumin. Careful with the cumin, it's a strong spice. We add a little bit of our homegrown habanero, dried habanero gives it a little bit of kick some oregano or Mexican oregano. And then the star of the show, what gives the marinade in the meat its red color, anchiote paste, which doesn't add a whole lot to the flavor. It's more for the appearance. And we put about a teaspoon or a tablespoon of that into this marinade. It's almost like a paste or a putty. You can also see we've got one white onion diced up. Big chunks. It's all going to puree in the blender, so it doesn't particularly matter how that's cut. And finally, salt and pepper to taste. All of that goes into the blender along with about a half a cup of orange juice and pineapple juice, giving it some of that citrus into the mix. And it's going to be a very thick paste marinade. For your meat, you're going to want to use a fatty pork, and you can typically find that in a shoulder or a butt. But as you can see here, we actually have the hindquarter of a hog that we hunted down in North Carolina. And we've got to bone this out in order to get to be able to slice this into the thin slices that'll go onto our trombo. Hmm. A Japanese Santoku knife on Mexican? Is this possible? We've also got a knife that they've sent over for us to get a look at, and it's from Nakano Knives out of Japan. We'll be putting some timestamps down below if you want to jump through the recipe because we've got an epic hog hunt in this. A trip to Mexico to taste authentic street tacos and you can jump straight to those elements or through those elements in the video. But I hope you watch it all. They sent this over. It's a Japanese Santoku knife with an olive wood handle. Beautiful knife, comes in a, a pretty nice box here, gift box. And this unique Santoku shape is kind of an all around, all purpose vegetable chef knife out of Japan. It, the bevel on it is a little bit different. We're going to see how this performs on our pork as well as our vegetables. We're going to go ahead and start with that pickled purple onion and chop that up with this Santoku knife. And Real quick, we'll just show you the difference between you've got a German chef knife that's designed for rocking and chopping versus the Santoku is more designed for that point and slicing while not rocking and chopping. So that's German 
eight inch chef knife at the bottom of the screen there. And you can see this Santoku. Once it hits the cutting board, that sharp edge at the end or that tip makes slicing and dicing easier. The Santoku is designed to be both vegetable and a meat cutter, kind of their Japanese version of a, a European chef knife. It's been around since the 1950s. As far as I'm concerned, a must have topping for this is pickled purple onions. Say that 10 times fast. You cut these up in the morning, throw them in with some salt and vinegar. They pickle throughout the day. Nice, vibrant color by the time dinner gets there. And they're fantastic on top of these tacos. That knife has performed well on both vegetables and meat. And we've got that hind quarter cut into thin strips. Ideally, you'd want to have that marinating for overnight, 12, 24 hours. But you can get away with three or four hours. It's a pretty strong marinade, so we've got it on for three or four hours. Let's go ahead and assemble our trombo. So we got this pretty cool little trompo device from Amazon, and this is how we're going to smoke this in our pellet grill. So we're also kind of doing a review of this piece of equipment. And not that it's complicated, but this means you don't have to have that large one-sided flame thing that they're doing with the street tacos down in Mexico. But with this, you still get kind of the effect and the shaving. Pretty simple. You pick your right size for, for your smoker. They come in several different sizes. Give you your clearance or your headroom and you pile your meat up from there. We'll do one pineapple on the bottom, stack our meat up, and then put a piece of pineapple on top. I'd like to thank those of you who have already hit the like button down below. That drives the algorithms that pushes this video up to the top. I appreciate it. Please excuse our mess. You can see our outdoor kitchen here is coming together. We've got the pad in. I just put the pavers around that pad and eventually come back. You will be able to see the roof and the countertop and how this is all going to lay out. We're trying to do it all ourselves. Because we had more than would fit on our little makeshift trombo there, we went ahead and grilled some on the Lodge Sportsman's Grill. I would set aside three hours to do this cook, but really cook to temperature. Somewhere between 145 to 155 is medium rare to medium. We like our pork on the more tender side, so not well done. Something else to take into consideration, this is wild pig. It's not farm raised, factory raised, all the the hormones, all the relaxed life. It, this meat is different than farm-raised meat. I did want to give a quick shout out to T&M Hunting in Four Oaks, North Carolina. That's an outfitter that does hog as well as deer hunting and turkey. They do all kinds of hunting. Mike, a phenomenal guide, invited us down and we had a fantastic hunt down there. Ended up with two good sized shooter hogs and that's actually what's providing the meat here. The hunting accommodations are very nice. As a matter of fact, we almost had a washout on the trip down. It was a pretty impressive storm that we came through, but it was nice to come into this well set up and established hunting cabin and get settled in for the hunt for the next two days. We did have to deal with a little bit of rain out in the trails as we were headed in, but Mike, the hunting guide, his equipment was well set up to get us out there. We were in prime on the sole lunar calendar, prime hunting times. All of it resulted in three pigs total harvested during the time frame we were there. Three, two, one, go. Are you ready? Are you ready? Ready, set, go. Are you ready? Are you ready? We were able to sport our brand new Revo outdoor knife kit. And Revo is actually what I use, this nest knife is what I use for my everyday carry. This kit is pretty nice for butchering the hog. <laughs> the outfitter is linked up with a local meat processor who does an amazing job of processing your meat. Once you get it down into quarters and cleaned up, he takes it from there. Just give me something to do when I retire. 
fix my buddy's deer meat. There ain't really nobody around here to do stuff like this. Sir, what's your name again? Dennis Pope. Dennis, thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Pretty work. I'll put a link down below and get in contact with them to get a hunt set up. want to have another nice topper that can go along with this it's habanero if you take a habanero and cut away the exterior while leaving the seeds and the webbing inside it reduces the heat but you get all of that fantastic flavor with the habanero throw in some vinegar onion salt pepper a little bit of lime on top and you've got a really good tasting chutney to pour across the top of your tacos tan fuerte so YouTube says that this video is perfect for your viewing habits this is my latest upload and over here is a playlist you might just enjoy I hope you liked it if you did please click like subscribe share and come on back for more you